Friday. All right. So, <laughs> welcome to episode 61. I made it to 61. Hell yeah. I like it. Um, we're live on Twitch. Go check out. Uh, actually, let's start out by saying I'm Nick. I'm Eric. And we're talking to Fair Sports. Um, <clears throat> if you're watching us on the Game Changer Sports Network or anywhere else, go follow us on Facebook on Talking Fair Sports. Uh, go to uh, Twitch and check out Twitch. Uh, we're live on Twitch at twitch.tv backslash Richter Shoe. And then we're going to start doing some Anchor. So we're going to be on Anchor as well. Try and find Talking Interference Sports or Richter Shoe Entertainment on Anchor. All right. So um, we got another fantastic day or a week of football coming from the Seahawks fans over here at least. Yes. Wow. Oh, that turned out pretty well. It did. <laughs> um, you know, the Rams lost. And, or, yeah, the Rams, yeah, Rams lost. lost. And Rams the Ford lose. I they think got still losing. They, they, they got stomped. They got destroyed. Damn. And uh, the uh, 49ers lost as well. Did you <laughs> did you get to check that out at all? Yes. Yeah, and the Falcons and 49ers game was phenomenal. That was great. Good stuff. Yeah, that was a great um, game. I mean, even if you're not a Seahawks fan and you're just a fan of football, that, that was, was a, a game. great game. I loved it. It yes. was phenomenal. Um, I was freaking out when uh, Austin Hooper had caught that ball, and they're like, oh, it's not a touchdown. I was like, oh, man, come on, come on. Yeah, they called it a threw- touchdown, <laughs> and then they took it back, and it was like, oh, they threw the last pl- They threw the last play, and he broke the plane, but they're like, no, he didn't break the plane. They had to go back to the review. Yeah, I was like, uh, yeah, and then as soon as they so- showed the slow motion, I was like, dude, really? <laughs> yeah, there's like, no way so he so obvious. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and then just you know because they could they got another one <laughs> right no uh, yeah on the kickoff return phenomenal yeah way mm-hmm. to go thank you falcons we appreciate you up here in seattle absolutely what other games popped out at you um that you wanted to talk about anything that was really the only one i got to watch because okay because of the debacle that i was dealing with yes yeah. <laughs> that sounds like quite the chore it, it was <laughs> uh eric went uh duck hunting and and had to uh deal with uh trying to collect this duck and... yeah and it was not as easy as it would sound <laughs> Oh man, uh, I'm sure you'll tell the story on uh, Northwest Limits. I will. All right, it, man. It's, I mean, it's too good of a story not to tell, really. A, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so we got games on Saturday this weekend. Oh, don't forget to so we, talk about the other shit. Which one? Oh yeah, I, I'll get to that. Um, so Game Changer Sports Network has been um, working with uh, Evolution Sim Sports, and it is a uh, simulator. Sh- simulated racing um and uh i again i don't want to talk too much about it where i sound like an idiot and not know what i'm talking about because i am an idiot and i don't know what i'm talking about (laughs) when it comes to this um so basically you guys go to um evolution um simulation i think is what it's called let me look evolution sim sport excuse me Go to their Facebook page. Check them out. They're doing a whole bunch of – their season just started. They're doing uh, simulated racing. Um, It is, you know, a lot of people who are like NASCAR racers, like actual NASCAR racers, uh, participate in this to uh, get practice for racing. And these guys, you know, they – they're about to have a – so what I wanted to tell you guys about is they're about to have a 24-hour race. Um, it's called the Daytona 24-Hour Race, and it'll take place on January 18th at 1300 GMT, and it's going to be think starting at yeah on the 18th, and uh, the race will go on for 24 hours, literally 24 hours. These guys are going to be sitting and racing. They're going to be switching cars, uh, switching racers in a car. So um, one guy is going to be racing. A guy will get out for two, three hours, race some more. And he'll get back in. Kind of like a relay race. kind of thing? Yeah, kind of. Sounds like that. Um, again, I don't know a whole lot about it. I want to educate myself a little bit more. But uh, go check out Evolution Sim Sports. 
Um, and they're sponsored by Move Up Lynchburg, Driven, Track Monkey Apparel, Racing Upward, and Game Changer Sports Network. So go check them out. Go check this out. If you're into racing or if you're not and you're, you know, intrigued about racing at all, go check it out. It's, uh, sounds, sounds cool to me and I'm looking forward to, uh, talking about it and learning about it myself. So, um, go check them out and, uh, you know, let's talk some football. Okay. (laughs) Um, yeah, crazy, crazy week last week. Uh, the NFC just looks, uh, you know, crazy wide open for anybody to take take over you know everybody's sitting at like 11 and 3 or 10 and 4 and and even the cowboys are limping in at 7 and 7 potentially this week we're looking at you know division clinching clinching situations with uh dallas at 7 and 7 and philadelphia at 7 and 7 yeah so uh they're playing to nope sunday they're playing sunday and uh it's in Philly. Are you? Yes, it is in Philly. So, are you? Uh, are you uh, taking any uh, jumps at this one? How do you Damn. feel about this one? Yeah. I want to jump to that one. You this one's jump to that one. I want to jump to that one immediately. All right. This one's gonna be, I think, the game of the week. Though they're not the best teams in the league, I think this has the most important implications for how the NFC playoffs might pop out because, gosh, Dallas has not been playing really well. But no. at some point, the offense can turn on like a dime yeah. like they did against the Rams. And, uh, you know, I think even if you slap New Orleans, if, gosh, if New Orleans didn't get a bye and they had to go and play – because it's so tight, you know, I don't know, man. Uh, anybody playing in Dallas just because of Dallas's offense and the weapons that they have, or uh, you know a- anything, Let's the their, home field yeah, advantage. Their, their their record, I don't know, doesn't necessarily reflect how good they are. Right, that's like, what I'm trying to get. You at. could definitely go in any of these teams. You know, I mean, Seattle or the 49ers go into Dallas and lose. That's what I'm saying. That's what I believe, and I think that's going to be you know the turning point here i feel less worried about going into philadelphia I as totally a team agree. than going into dallas right so um it's in philadelphia they have home field advantage the cowboys just poured it on to the rams last week they have the best offense in in nfl right now mm-hmm. they're second best in passing and sixth best in rushing the Philadelphia Eagles are kind of middle of the pack here in basically everything, but I would say defense where they're ranked ninth. I think they're a little bit better than most. Yeah, but still, according to this, according to NFL.com, they're, the Cowboys they're, defense yeah, is better. They're not as good as the Cowboys defense. Man, I don't know. I mean, I honestly think, I mean, this is one of those ones. It, it depends on what version of these teams – plays right i mean you could flip a coin and be like all right i'm you know and then yeah when it comes down to the game i mean dallas could blow the eagles out of the water absolutely and it could easily go the other way well and i think i don't the I really dallas don't. cowboys in this situation are their own worst enemy in this in this matchup the cowboys almost were like the only team in NFL history to have to kick the ball in the first half and then have to kick the ball in the second half just because of wording. Did you hear about this? I did. Yeah, so they are their own worst enemy, and I believe that if Dallas loses, it's because of Dallas, not because of Philadelphia. I can agree with that. That's that's what I'm thinking about it. I mean, Dallas Cowboys have all the tools and all the weapons to win and be better than a seven and seven team. Yeah, Most I definitely. Just, I, I think the downfall with them, at least the last two seasons, has been the coaching staff, not the skill level of the players. I agree with that. I totally agree with that as well. Which, 
I might even go as far to say as, as it trickles down from a GM standpoint a little bit too. I mean, I don't, I, I don't disagree with that. Either. Right. I mean, you can't lay that all on the head coach. Right. You know? I mean, um. So tell me what you're thinking on this matchup. Who are you taking? You know, I'm going to take the Cowboys. Cowboys? All right. Let me get my handy-dandy piece of paper ready. Tell me why you're taking the Cowboys. I just think that the Cowboys have a couple more um, weapons that they can use than the Eagles do, and I think they use them <laughs> a little more efficiently than the Eagles do. And – I mean, I, I think they're going to win by a field goal. Like, this is going to be a close game. I like that. And I I really agree with it. I think that's uh, the best way that you could put it. Um, and I'll go back to my previous statement. If the Cowboys lose, it's because of the Cowboys yeah. and them showing up and not being as good of a team as we all know that they could potentially have been this season. And I think that's you know got to be super frustrating for the players too because – I, they know that they're a better team than what they're showing. You know, and I I think a lot of it has to do with, the, I mean, most frustrating for Dak, who's on a contract season right now. Right. I would think that you would want to be trying to perform a little bit better. I don't know what's going on there. He's I feel like I, think well. say, I don't think it's him. I think it's other aspects of the team. I don't think their defense is horrible. I don't think that their defense no. is the one that you could go, that's the problem. I think in each and every game that they've played, one has failed the other significantly. Yeah, I mean, I, I the problem in Dallas isn't that the defense isn't good or the offense isn't good or the offensive line isn't good. It's just that they're, they're inconsistent. I agree with that. I think we're uh, both picking Dallas here. Let's flip that coin. Got the home? No, that's visiting, isn't yeah. it? All right, Dallas, clean sweep. All right. Uh, let's start going back to the uh, – I wanted to get that one out of the way. I was really excited about that game. So uh, let's let's move on to the Saturday games. Yeah. Saturday game that will first pop up will be the Texans visiting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's look at – the NFL stats here. And uh, offense, surprisingly, actually really not that surprisingly, uh, Jameis Winston has been chucking the ball like a boss, mm -hmm. whether it be to his players or the defense. But he's throwing the ball. Who do y'all play next? Do you mean the Seahawks? The Seahawks will be playing the Arizona Cardinals next. That's who the Seahawks will be playing Michael. Um, but uh, in terms of this matchup, I don't think there's really too much to uh, uh, really look at here. No, I think that Tampa Bay. You think it's Tampa? No. Uh, I was going to say <laughs> Houston, in my eyes, is the way better team. And I think uh, at this point, uh, Tampa's – struggling to stay at 500 or above 500 for this season. I don't think they're going to make 500. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think this is going to be a closer game than you think just because, I mean, looking at this, I mean, you look at the offense and then look at where the, the Texans, Texans defense. defense is. Texans defense is pretty shot. Pretty suspect. I mean, I, th I Easy think when I agree, Michael. I yeah, I think everyone agrees with that. Uh, Taking Houston. I, I you know I think this is, this might be a game that comes down to like the the Rams Chiefs game did last year is just, just whoever a has shoot the ball, out and, yeah ball last yeah yeah because these are both very good offenses. I mean. The, at least on this, the Buccaneers have a better defense, but I don't know. I just feel like Houston is all around the better team in terms of, uh, yeah, cool. I think Jameis Winston is a good quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's chucking the ball well. 
He's getting it to his guys. They're scoring some touchdowns. But um, when it comes to that run game, it's really disgusting. And sure. uh, uh, Houston's got – you know, people who have put them at seventh in rushing. So there's going to be the combo of the run punch and the pass. So I think uh, the play action is going to be a huge factor in this game for Houston. And if it doesn't pay off for them, um, then, you know, b- blame the Texans defense. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. All right. Coin takes. Visiting team. Visiting team, Houston, clean sweep again. All right. Let's go to the next Saturday game. What's going on? Defense is horrible. So is Houston's, my friend. So is Houston's. How's it going, Dennis? Missed you, buddy. Houston scores 40. I'm, I hope so, man. I need it on my fantasy team. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Big game right here. Buffalo Bills will be playing the New England Patriots. And uh, this was the first time since, I believe, 2008 Tom Brady was not selected for a Pro Bowl. His response was, do you think I play this game? Yeah, he's playing to not be in the Pro Bowl. (laughs) Bowl. So, first time he was not selected for a Pro Bowl. Any thoughts on that? Eh, whatever. No, really. I mean, when has he... And he's played in what? One Pro Bowl? I don't know how many he's played in, but selection of Pro Bowl definitely still gets slapped on your resume. Yeah, it does. But, I I mean, does anyone really care about that? Eh, some people do. Yeah, some people well. look at it. Um, the Bills rushing is definitely a lot better than the Patriots. Um, their passing is horrendous compared to the Patriots. Their defenses are boom, boom, one and three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Wow, this is going to be a defensive struggle for this game. Um, and it's in Gillette. So I got to give the edge to the Patriots. You know what? I'm actually I'm going Bills. You're going Bills this time? Uh-huh. All right. I like it. Let's get some diversity up in here. Um, I think that it's very possible that the Bills pull it off. Um, I'm not opposed. To that I actually absolutely would like to see New England not clinch the division for once and gosh who knows how long what 20 years <laughs> yeah, or something, something like that like probably that. more yeah. like 50 I'm just kidding obviously <laughs> but um yeah, dude, it's been like 100 it's, it's years been, it's over 100 years <laughs> it's, it's like I mean Ben Franklin was the president <laughs> the last time they did <laughs> um <laughs> Jokes. Buffalo, Buffalo All definitely. Jokes. <laughs> Buffalo definitely has the potential to pull this one out, but I'm giving the edge to New England just on the simple fact that it's I really Gillette. think it's in Gillette, and I think the Patriots' defense, though it is, boom, one and three. That significant jump from one and three. It is. It's a significant jump, though. Um, the Patriots' defense is ranked higher on this on what we're looking at. Right. Uh, I honestly would, wouldn't be surprised if Buffalo's offense was honestly a little bit better than the Patriots, in my opinion, just because of that running game. Yeah. But uh, I'm rooting for Buffalo, but I'm taking New England. All right. And let's I'm get that coin. Still going to take Buffalo. All right. Coin pick. Coin takes team. home team, New England. All right. That's a chance for you to get one up on us, man. Let's yeah. check comments. Y'all are in cahoots. Patriots win. Statement game. I like it, Michael. I hope so. I hate yeah. to say it, but I think Buffalo is overrated and the Pats will win by 10, says Dennis. Uh, Dennis also says, didn't Miami win the division in 2009 or something like that? I, pff, man, I have no idea. I don't think so. I think New England has um, – I hope you're joking. Maybe I'm – I don't know. Miami, I feel like, hasn't really been good since, like, the 80s, right? Or the 70s. Man. I I couldn't tell you. I'm not factual like that. I wasn't alive then. I don't know. But the uh, Miami Dolphins have been bad ever since I've been alive. So, huge game in the NFC West. Big game. The Rams just got stomped by the Falcons 
And the 49ers. Well, the Rams got stomped by I the said Cowboys. Vegas, excuse me. Yeah. Next yes. them up. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, the Rams got stomped by the Cowboys, and the 49ers eked out a loss. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh, maybe they lost by two scores. Uh, both, <laughs> <laughs> both teams uh, still well in contention. Of, I'm pretty sure the 49ers have clinched at this point. Yes. Um, not the division, but a playoff berth. Yeah. I think the the Rams are still fighting and, and scratching and clawing yeah, for a spot. I think they're still looking for a wild card spot, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, I think that's correct. And uh, I think this is a great – opportunity for the Rams to show why they deserve to be in the playoffs. Because if they don't win this game, do they deserve to be swinging at these 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 juggernauts that are running around in the NFC right now? I mean, as much as Dallas does. God, Dallas is only in because of how awful the uh, South is, or the East is, excuse me. It's, I, I mean, I agree, but I mean – I don't know. In my mind, it's like I mean, they're they're limping. The in. Rams are no. The only reason than... the the only reason why I would even be worried about Dallas is if you're playing in Dallas. Yeah, I agree, and that's that won't happen. I don't think so. I don't think there's well, if they clinch, you know, the division spot, they'll be playing a wild card team at home, potentially. Yeah. I'm just saying. This is a this is a perfect opportunity for the but Rams to show why going to be the 49ers. This is a perfect opportunity for the Rams to show why they deserve to be in the playoffs. And if they don't win this game, I don't want to see them in the playoffs. That's my 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 statement on this. Uh, go Seattle. We're going to the Super Bowl. Isaac says, "I hope so." I'm looking it up. Oh, Miami, Miami won in the division. Hey, Dennis, good call. Hey, Miami did win. In 2008, the division. So the last time, still 11 years wasn't ago. that the first time Tom Brady took the field? What? I would think that was the first time Tom Brady took the field in 2008. When he was playing? When he started playing? Tom Brady's been playing. Since no, longer. So yeah. 2008? He's been playing way before 2008. How did they lose the division then? I want to find this out. I, I'm sounding dumb now. What happened then? Uh, I don't my know. 2008. Bro, that was 11 years ago. NFL. I can't. I can barely remember what I had for breakfast. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Nope. Tom Brady was. I think that was when they played Oakland and they had the tuck rule, right? Miami did win. Oh, they had the same record, but they had a better conference record. Okay. When did Tom Brady come into the league? That was like 2002, wasn't it? Yeah, that was – that was. I'm stupid for saying a that. a long time ago. I'm stupid for saying that. I'm sorry. I apologize, guys. I'm dumb. Don't listen to me. <laughs> I'm a professional. We know what we're talking about. <laughs> 2000, excuse me. But I think 2001 was when he first started playing because he was on the bench for a little bit, right? Doesn't yeah, matter. because they had that other guy that I Whatever, I'm stupid, guys. Don't listen to me. Tip my tongue. Uh, Brady got hurt. That's what it was. Can you guys do our Seahawks things? Seahawks. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? Okay. We'll say C, you type hawks. Okay. <laughs> C, you type hawks. <laughs> All right. Back to us not sounding stupid. <laughs> hey, don't lump me in that basket. I can do that all on my own. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, – I, what I was saying again was is a uh, big game for the NFC West, big game for the NFC playoffs. Because if the Rams lose or win, and the 49ers lose, this team's going to drop to 11 and four, and you're looking at potentially two, three teams surpassing uh, yeah. the 49ers. Because I think after having just a great season, yeah, a phenomenal start to the season, and just but just some. Just losing four games, though, makes yeah. that much of a – like, that's just how nasty the NFC is right now. But And what's crazy to me is that we're – so 11-3, and three, so yeah, both the Seahawks and the 49ers have the same record. So going into the game, if they both win, beat 12-3. and three. 
Right. Well, the Seahawks would still so, have the better record just because of conference play. Right. But I'm just saying <laughs> is like whoever wins that game is obviously is going to be first. Right. But then whoever loses is going to be fifth I, I 12 and four. Right. Like if this what? If, if the 49ers lose this game, how do you win 12 games and, and you're in a fifth spot? Yeah. No, it's like, insane. What? Yeah, it's insane. That's, it's great. And so that's what I'm saying. I love the NFC is such a better division than a better conference than everywhere <laughs> else. <laughs> yeah. It's just just that feel, except for maybe, you know, where Dallas and Philly are sitting like, come on, man, 7 and 7, we're limping into the playoffs. Yeah, but I mean, then again, what the Seahawks? What was that in the nineties? They had a lose. They had a losing record in the early two thousands, and still was it made early two thousands or that was late nineties? The Seahawks had a losing record and got into the playoffs. Yeah, they're, they're I like, think that was the eight and nine or something yeah, like that. Yeah, um, I think they were playing. That was the season that they played the Saints in the playoffs, and Marshawn beasted out with that uh, that long ass run. Marshawn is not playing then. It might not have been in the early 2000s then. Eight and nine Seahawks playoffs. 2010. Pete Carroll, John Schneider. Damn. I didn't realize it was that recently. And they won the playoffs against the Saints with the beast mode. Oh, they were seven and nine. Yeah, excuse me. I don't know where I was reading that. I because uh, I said eight and nine. Eight and nine, excuse me. Uh, because I that, that, do that doesn't math at all. I don't know why I was running with that. Um, <laughs> See, Matt, I, I told I can make myself sound <laughs> stupid all on my own. <laughs> you made me sound stupid for saying that. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, seven and nine, and they won the division. Yeah, seven and nine. Look at that. Check that out. Hey, that would be super cool if Dallas does that this year. <laughs> I like your Christmas sweater. Thank you. Appreciate that. He looks good in it. I should have worn mine too. I didn't even think about it. I have mine too. Well, next week. Yep, that's true. Next week's closer to Christmas. Or maybe after Christmas, depending on when you do this. That's right. All right, so who are we taking in this one? I just hmm. don't see I just don't see the Rams winning this one. I want the Rams to win. And it if is the Rams, if the, if the Rams, if the Rams win, and the Seahawks win, the Seahawks clinch the division. Mm-hmm. Crucial game to be watching right here. Yeah, not so much for the rest of the league, but for the NFC West, huge deal. Um, San Francisco is just far and away the superior team. I don't think there's any discrepancy there. I know, but can I, I get one of these? Is that a thing? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, the, uh, the, I don't think that there's any discrepancy in San Francisco and the Rams, um, but yeah. the two teams play each other all the time, and the Rams just beat Seattle the week prior. And what? What? Um, the last time the Rams played, the 49ers won, right? Yeah. October. 2019 on the 13th, and the 49ers won 20 to 7. You know, but the year prior, <laughs> call me crazy, but I'm taking the Rams. Yeah, I like it. L A R. I think San Francisco is the far superior team. And uh, I don't think that there's any question that San Francisco is going to pull this one out. I hope so, but um, I just can't. I don't see it in my mind of minds. The guy who thought Tom Brady was got into the league in ten two, years ago, yeah, five eleven years, years ago. It's <laughs> all right. The guy that can't add <laughs> yeah. thinks uh, the Rams are winning. So you know. Oh boy. All right, man. Let's get to the coin. Home team, San Francisco. All right. And I do agree that I think the 49ers are the superior team in this matchup, but I just. Isaac says, I want to go live with you guys. 
I want the Rams to lose. How can I follow you guys? Isaac, you can go to Talk Interference Sports on Facebook. Search that, and you can follow us there. We're also on Twitch. Look up Richter Shoe, R-I-T, R-I-C-T-O-R-S-H-O-U-E. And we just started using Anchor also. You can find us on Anchor. Also, Farmers Only. <laughs> and Grinder. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you want to, uh, <laughs> if you want to, uh, you know, go to a Seahawks game or something like that, you can always use uh, promo code GCSN at SeatGeek.com and get 20% off of your purchase or $20 off. Excuse me. All right. Let's move right along. I wanted to plug that. <laughs> yeah. Sound like you're just going to wait to say that all night. <laughs> That's the last game of Saturday. Let's move right along. Okay. Now we're on Sunday. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I wish you guys could see our screen right now. Cincinnati Bengals are Jesus playing the Miami Christ. Dolphins. The who's the huh? The what's the where? What's going on? Yeah, those are both cities. <laughs> Is that a football? <laughs> <laughs> Will you teach me to football? <laughs> 32nd in rushing. 23rd in passing, 30th in defense, and 29th in offense. The home field advantage Miami Dolphins are facing up against the 26th in offense, 29th in defense, 22nd in passing, and 27th in rushing. 1 and 13 Bengals. Are the Bengals going to go into Miami and squeak out their second win of the season? Is that happening, Eric? Tell me why. What's happening? Hey, who's the current quarterback in Cincinnati? I'm pretty sure Andy Dalton had the snaps last week. Did he? I'm I uh, not positive. I forgot to watch that game. Yeah, God. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I paid attention to as well. Um, let me pop back, check it out. I mean, but I don't think it really matters. They were playing New England. That they were spying on them. It was Andy Dalton. Well. Andy Dalton with 151 yards and one touchdown. Joe Mixon popped out with 136 yards against that number one ranked defense. Bing, bang. Man. Okay, are you guys in Seattle? We're actually in Bremerton. I hope so. I hope we're going to win. Isaac wants to know where we're located. We are in the Bremerton area. What else is yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I say that like I'm proud or something. <laughs> right. Um, damn, I'm not even sure what to think about this one. I I don't even care about this game. I don't. I know, but I want to beat you, so I care about this game. I'm already going to win, man. Ha! <laughs> That's... I'm picking I'm picking Cincinnati. Cincinnati's gonna pull it out. Frick. Cincinnati's gonna win against the Dolphins. It's gonna happen. They're gonna go in there. Joe Mixon's gonna rush all yeah. over that. Dang. Andy Dalton's gonna throw three touchdowns. Mm. Three touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the Dolphins will easy, have easy there, uh, the skipper. The Miami Dolphins will have a turnover as an interception, a fumble, and they will give up a safety. <laughs> yeah. The but the Bengals are going wild out all over Miami. <laughs> what have you had? And how much have you had? <laughs> it's not gonna go down like that, but the Bengals will win. Or the Bengals get the W. Actually, yeah, I can I can see that. All right, so you're taking Cincinnati as well. Yeah, I'll take Cincinnati. Let's check out that coin, baby. All right. All right. Anybody who doesn't know, all season long, we've been team. we've been um, trying to compete against each other in picks and against a coin as well because we have a better chance than a fifty fifty flip. Yeah, we're that good. That's how much <laughs> confidence we have. <laughs> All right. Let's check these. 
I'm picking a tie. Dennis, I like it. That's the way to go. I mean, I'm hoping yeah, the plane crash. But... <laughs> the Steelers are visiting the Jets. The Steelers have a good defense, and there's nothing else really to talk about in this game. <laughs> you know, that that's a good point. I mean, it's really, neither one of them have anything going on except for their defense. Yeah. Uh, 30th in offense. Fourth in defense, 31st in passing, 26 in rushing. That's what you're looking at in the eight and six Steelers. The and on the you other. Get to eight and six with that. <laughs> I guess the fourth ranked defense. Hey, you know what? Mike Tomlin, after everything that has emerged over the last 12 months, should get coach of the year. Because you're sitting at eight and six with this. Yeah, the, the departure of Antonio Brown. All of the things that have arose, arose, arisen, arisen have risen, yeah. arisen, things that have shown up <laughs> Damn. because of Antonio Brown and uh, the Le'Veon Bell thing, too. Dude, well, this guy also, was holding I mean, this all under wraps and doing such a good job of keeping this team together. And Juju Smith has been injured this for, gosh, a couple weeks. And uh, they're still 86. And Ben Roethlisberger. And Ben Roethlisberger. And your backup quarterback that came in, and everyone is like, okay, boom. And you dealt with the guy getting sent back to third grade, getting hit on the head with a helmet. Yeah. Oh, we forgot about that one too, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Well, uh, yeah, Mason Rudolph is no longer playing in his little reindeer games. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to learn today, boy. You're going to learn today. Yeah, I mean – Damn, as a head coach, yeah. Sorry, Pete Carroll, you're not winning a this year. Uh, Thank you, Chelsea. <laughs> it's arisen. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, finally we got a teacher in here. <laughs> I English. <laughs> Mike Tomlin deserves coach of the year, man. I'm telling you. A man of the year, coach Is of this the year. Good. Oh, boy. The Jets don't stand a chance of I this, agree. Man. The Steelers, all day for me. Yeah. Pittsburgh for you. Mm-hmm. Pittsburgh for me. And Jets for the coin. Home team. Jets for the coin. I like it. Maybe the Jets will have risen from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> like a phonics from the ashes. <laughs> a phonics? <laughs> Oh yeah, baby! Another one of those. Oh, who's a, God <laughs> damn! Another one of these. Who's a what? And what's a football games? This is the New York Giants versus the Washington Redskins. <laughs> I think they're still football teams. I don't. Know. Not positive, but we will find out. <laughs> and the Giants got possibly four. Oh, because of uh, referee stuff. I get what you're saying. Hey, man. Mm. Play better. You don't have to blame the coach or the referees. I agree. Um, New York. And Eli Let, Manning, Eli Manning is, yeah. is back at quarterback. Let this guy finish out the rest of the season. Let him finish his career. Uh, give him, Make him bring the Giants to 4-11 and 11 instead of 3-12 and 12 because Eli Manning – is going to go out on that field. He's going to score all the touchdowns and all of the victories. I mean, I think in this the, day. I mean, the simple fact that he's still out there might be why the Redskins just don't have an offense to talk about. Yeah, I mean, well, they're dead last. Yeah. So, um, I'm going with the Giants. In this no, one. I'm also taking the Giants. All right, let's check the coin. The coin is being flipped. Boom. Coin is still caught in the air, and it's up. (laughs) (laughs) It's a miraculous. Uh, I'll do that one again. Same result. New York Giants. We're getting some clean sweeps on this one. Crazy, crazy. All right. Let's check the comments real quick. Tomlin is a D-bag. I didn't try to impede on the runner, idiot. And did try. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. When he stuck his foot out, yeah, it happened. No, Bengals twice and Browns twice. Everyone wishes their team is 
guaranteed those games each year. Um, you know, you should you should be winning those games. Um, and you can make that same argument for the guys that um, you know think that the New England Patriots winning eight games or um, or winning their, their division nine or games in a whatever. season easily. Yeah, nine games in a season easily. I mean, you can make that argument. I agree with you, but um, you can't really. Nope, it's not. It's not the Steelers' fault for being in that division. And it's not the Patriots' fault for being in that division. The other teams need to s- step up. Yeah. Oh, I agree with you, though. I see what you're saying. Um, moving right along, Panthers, Colts. Um, man, the Panthers were giving the uh, Seahawks a little run for their money there at the end of the game, weren't they? Yeah, when they had six rookies in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. Just saying. Okay. All right. You don't want to be one of those guys, huh? I mean, I mean it's, it's, it happens. <laughs> it's yep, it's that's facts. True. It is. Um, Indy is 24th in offense, 16th in defense, 27th in passing, and 9th in rushing. On the opposite side of the ball for the Panthers, we are looking at 19th in offense, 26th in defense, 18th in passing, and 13th in rushing. Is the 16th rank defense strong enough to hold down Kish- Christian McCaffrey? That's the question that I got to ask you because um, Christian McCaffrey, if he just blows up in the next two games and has an amazing two games, he could set the record for scrimmage yards for the NFL yeah, in a I season. Mean, he is a freak beast. but uh... He is a freak beast. I don't really got much to talk about the rest of the team. Yeah, I mean, if the offense can manage to cover one guy, you really don't have much to worry about. Do the, I mean, defense. Do the do the Colts offensively have enough to stop or to uh, score against the Panthers here as frequently as they were against the six rookies <laughs> that the Seahawks had on on the field. I'm taking Indy in this one. I think uh, I think Indy's going to have the Carolina Panthers' number on this one. Um, it's going to be a close game, but I think coaching is going to come down to it. And Carolina just fired Ron Rivera a little bit ago, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't really have much faith in what's going on in the Panthers. Christian McCaffrey is a one-man wrecking ball. Yeah, and I think I mean you know having one guy isn't isn't gonna win you a bunch of games. No, it'll make you and win five. As amazing <laughs> as he is, and as um you know as amazing as he's had this season, I'm going with the Colts. You're going with the Colts? Yeah. All right, I, I mean, like it. Let's get a coin flip. Yeah. I don't really have much to say on that one. Home team. That's Indy, right? I think so. Yep. Yep. All right. Moving right along. Ravens. Browns. Ravens, probably the best team in the league. Yep. Browns. Not probably one team. of the most questionable teams in the league. I'm going Baltimore. I don't. I mean, I, do we really need to talk about that? No. I mean, I I want to pick the Browns just as, as a joke, but I'm not going to. Hold yeah. On the Ravens. Yeah. Baltimore's going to stomp them. I totally agree. I mean, barring some freak accident. Yeah. Or everyone gets hit in the head with a. Helmet. Twelve people for the Baltimore Ravens made the Pro Bowl this year. Yeah. Record setting. How ridiculous. Visiting Baltimore. All right, moving right along. Falcons, Jaguars, five and nine teams. Middle of the pack teams. Below middle of the pack. Falcons just beat the 49ers, though. This will be in Atlanta. Gardner Minshew's probably still snapping. I believe so. I believe so. 
Um, I would really like to see him get another win. I don't think it's going to be today, though. Yeah. Sunday. I, I'm taking the Falcons. Atlanta? Game. Yeah. I'm going to take Jacksonville on this one just to diversify. But um, I really think this one actually is a coin flip. I think both of these teams uh, show up on days that they yeah. shouldn't. Sometimes they just really don't. Yeah, I mean, out of the games from these teams that I have seen, I mean, inconsistency if, is the word I would use. I mean, I don't, I'm not even sure if that's the right word I would use, but okay. Either one has a very good chance of winning this game. I just think that the Falcons coming off that win from San San Francisco. You're gonna steamroll. Yeah, I think that yeah they got a little bit of momentum going. It is in Atlanta. Dennis out here says Browns upset of the week. Boy, wouldn't that shift? Some crazy stuff going on in the AFC. That. I think so too. That would be great. great. Um, no, no, it would be crazy shift in the AFC mm-hmm. if that happens. But uh, probably not so significant. And the coin just dropped. That is the continuation of the streak. We've made it 16 weeks and dropped the coin at least once every week. All so right. we're 16 or no? That's right. All right. We're, yeah. That's Sh- that. Shift in the um, AFC balance of how well people are talking about um, how good the, uh, the Ravens are. If they lose to the Browns, man, um, that would be oh. insane. I would love to see that. I would love to and talk about that. It's likely, too. It's, I mean, because, it's, they I mean, see just, each other pretty regularly. Yeah, so. and, and look what happened you know, in San Francisco. San Francisco, yeah. Okay. Or, and what, look Any what given Sunday, man. San Francisco did to the Seahawks last yeah. year. Yep, any given Sunday, man. Coin flip, home team. Give me an Atlanta. All right, New Orleans in Tennessee. And I don't think we even really need to talk about this one. Give me New Orleans all day. Yep. New Orleans. Coin flip. Home team, Tennessee. All right. Not much to talk about here. Uh, Drew Brees set the record last year or last game for uh, most touchdowns in a career, yeah, all time. Um, congratulations to him, and uh, they're just gonna keep keep rolling uh, through the playoffs. I think this I think is so. an NFC Championship bound team, if not a Super Bowl bound team. Um, Oakland Raiders six and eight visiting the Los Angeles Chargers. Who, God, man, I was, you know, after their season last year, I was, you know. All about the Bolts, and I was really looking forward to seeing them do well. Wait, how about five and nine? Eighth, eighth, fifth, and third, or fifth in offense, defense, and passing because they just beef it on teams or on situations where they shouldn't. I don't know how many times they've missed field goals and lost games this season. Mm. It's ridiculous. Um, I haven't watched the Chargers game yet this year. There's been a few times where they've missed field goals and have lost games because of it. Um, and I don't even really think it's mostly Philip Rivers' fault. A lot of people are hating on Philip Rivers right now, and I, can, I really can't blame him. I don't think it's his fault. Um, and <clears throat> you got Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler in the backfield, and you're ranked 23rd. Something's wrong with that O-line. Uh, I don't think it's those rushing, uh, those running backs. Those running backs are good running backs. Both of them are good running backs. That is not... Um, the offense is fault primarily. I think it's 90% uh, defense – or not defense, uh, special teams, and then the rest of it's the offensive line just being buckus. That's just my analyst perspective of uh, what's going on in the Chargers. But, you know, people are just, you know, not performing there in Los Angeles. And uh, I think Oakland is um, – for the most part, pretty consistent with their skill level. I don't think there's games that they've had this year. There's maybe been a few that they just got blown out by somebody that they shouldn't have. But, um, you yeah, know, give me, give me Oakland in this one. I said they were only going to win four games this year. And I'm yeah, thinking I'm now they're going to go seven. Oakland. Oakland. Give me a coin flip. Home team. Coin takes the Chargers. Check the comments real quick. Comments say 
Eric called the Atlanta win last week. He did. He did. And uh, he even texted me and he's like, I told you. I told you. <laughs> yeah, because that's how I sound. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> he did. Had my Good hair job. curlers in. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> the Detroit Lions are sitting at 3-10 and 1 and they are going to Denver against the 5 and 9 Denver Broncos. Uh gosh. I don't care about this game at all. I don't know who <laughs> um I'm going to pick Detroit, just because I know Matt Patricia's coming back next year. I read some things about that, and I want to see him uh, finish out strong. So let's go Detroit. I'm going to Detroit. I'm going with the Broncos because it's in Denver, and they got Drew Luck behind the behind the snap now. So he's uh, you know been and, relatively and they, impressive, and they got the 13th ranked defense. That's what I'm Okay. Looking at. All right. Give me a coin flip. I'm just rooting for Detroit and I'm picking that because of that. Detroit. <laughs> coin takes Detroit. All right. Uh realistically though, I think Denver's probably gonna smash them, but I'm gonna take Lions just to uh change it up a little bit. Um sure, why not? You got the Seahawks at home hosting the four nine and one Cardinals. Seahawks are eleven and three. Give me your thoughts. Let's talk. Oh man, I don't know. I'm Cardinals. They uh, coming off a big win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the Browns. Um, Seahawks just lost um, Josh Gordon. I oh. don't think that's a big deal to them. Uh, Bobby Wagner is uh, probable. Don't think he's going to be playing. Um, Ziggy Ansah probably not playing. Stefan or uh, Quandre Diggs. Not playing. Um, and I think Clowney is not playing. So that questionable defense that the Seahawks have is going to be replaced with a lot of uh, – Michael – or uh, yeah, Michael Kendricks is hurt as well. So we got a few linebackers, a couple yeah, guys in the backfield, right. and a few guys on the line. Just Just some holes in there that Kyler Murray could dish up. Yeah, this is a a definite. You know, everybody gives me crap when I talk about Arizona and the Rams and the 49ers. When even when they're bad, the Seahawks have issues with them because they see them that often. And uh, this is very plausible that the Seahawks could lose this game. I don't see it being very likely, but um, the Seahawks have had a questionable defense all season. I think the Seahawks are going to win, but I think they're going to win by like a field goal. It's going to be close. Uh, give me Seattle as well. But, uh, man, this is going to be a close game. Yeah, I, I I think people are too caught up in looking at the records of these teams. I don't look at their records when and it comes to this. No. I mean, especially – Tyler Murray is a good quarterback. Yes, he Anybody is. Anybody who's saying that he's not is not paying attention to what he's doing. The rest of that team, especially the defense, needs to be held more accountable. Yeah, I – the problems in Arizona are not because of Kyler Murray. I totally agree with that. Let's peep game on the uh, comments here real quick. Popeye's chicken, Jeff says, is the snizzles. I agree. I love Popeye's chicken. And Popeye's chicken is good, man. I always like messing around with some Popeye's chicken, Agreed. dude. Agreed. Um, oh, no. Have you ever had the chicken from Red Apple? No. So good. Mm, I'm going to have to try that. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of chicken in general. So I know, it, but their fried chicken, like it, the, it's the skin for me. It's like it's so crispy. It's, it's fantastic. Mm. Anyway, fried batter, baby. <laughs> I like but, it. Mm, never mind. Shout out Popeye's chicken and red apple. <laughs> and red apple chicken. <laughs> Got the home team as well. There's another clean sweep. All right, baby. I think this is the last game of the week. Oh no, we got two more. Uh, the Chiefs, ten and four. The Bears, seven and seven. Night game, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Who do you got, and why? What's going on here, Eric? Uh, 
I think the Chiefs are going to stomp on the Bears. I think so, too. I don't think there's any question about that one. Uh, the Bears' defense is relatively good. Um, the only problem that I could see this being um, an issue for um, the Chiefs is the fact that their defense is not very good. It's not great. It's not their defense. good. Their, yeah, their, their defense is okay. Um, Man. You know, everything's stacked on, on the uh, Chiefs' side here. The offense is ranked fifth, and their defense is ranked 18th, where everything offensively for the Bears is above 20, 25. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a battle of whether or not the Bears' defense can hold on and uh, allow the Bears' offense to score, which I don't think that's going to happen. Give me Kansas City. Yeah, and I think – I think the Chiefs' defense is good enough to limit the Bears' scoring, and I think that Patrick Mahomes is smart enough to work something out around that the, Bears', the Bears defense. defense. Okay, so um, give you Kansas City. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think this is going to be another one that's closer than people think. Okay, but give me Chiefs all day. All right, let me get a coin flip. Got a home team. Give me Chicago for the coin. All right, so. Um, the next game is going to be the Packers and the Vikings. It is in Minnesota. This is a huge game for the NFC North, huge game for the NFC just in general. And I'm running out of time on my anchor here real quick. Let me stop it, and then we'll go ahead and start it again. Second podcast on the anchor. Um, but go ahead. Tell me what you're thinking in this Packers game. Well, who knows? I mean, this might be a uh... – a time for uh, Kirk Cousins to show that you know he can play in a prime time game. Okay, all right, <laughs> mm. but I mean, he hasn't been able to. I know, but he. So has, this... I know, but he might be like, oh well, I gotta prove everybody wrong. So, do you think that he's going to be able to prove everybody wrong this time? I mean, I mean, just my gut feeling. No, no, I'm taking Green Bay. I think. I'm yeah. I'm going to say this is going to be Kirk Cousins' first win in primetime. Thanks. So. I'm go yep, they're in Minnesota. They're fighting for this position. I think Minnesota really wants to prove themselves this time. Dalvin Cook is running the ball phenomenally. Um I think I'm not positive, but I think Adam Thielen might be back this week. So Kirk Cousins might have a new option in okay. uh passing. Give me Minnesota in this one. I think this is going to be just because of how crazy this game is going to be. Um, really, really close and very exciting to watch. And if Philadelphia and uh, uh, the Cowboys weren't playing this week, this would have been my my game for the week. Monday night football. Give me Minnesota. You got Green Bay? Yeah, I got Green Bay. Give me that flip. Let's go. All right, home team, Minnesota. All right, the picks are in. The games are picked. We got them right here. Next week, when we come back, we will be talking about our records. We will be seeing where we're standing, and we'll go over all of our picks through this season. We will be looking at the last week, and we will be starting to talk about some playoff stuff here coming up real soon. All right. I'm really excited about it. Um, again, we are Talk Interference Sports. We are here live on the Game Changer Sports Network's Facebook page. If you guys are not following Game Changer and you're listening to this somewhere else, watching it somewhere else, go check out the Game Changer Sports Network. If you're buying tickets to an event, Go to game or go to seatgeek.com and use promo code GCSN and get twenty dollars off your purchase. Also, we are now on Anchor. Go check us out on Anchor. Try to find us on Anchor. Follow and like us, please. We need to start rolling that up. And uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be going out to <clears throat> the XFL mini camp. I'm going to be getting some pictures. I'm going to be getting some photos. I'm going to try and record. I don't know if they're going to let me, but I'm going to try. And um, we got to have um, opportunities to talk to Jim Zorn um, in a media conference. Um, we're going to be talking to some of the guys who we interviewed um, already on the show. So if you haven't checked that out, go back, 
Check out Seattle Dragons interviews that I've had on Game Changer Sports Network. Also shared on Talk Interference Sports. Uh, Big boy Jeff's going to be joining me, uh, trying to help me out with a second set of hands. Go check out Jeff's basement. And he says that they talk better sports on Talk Better Sports, but obviously they don't. No. Mm. I mean, they could probably do math. Yeah. I don't even think they can. Mm. But big boy Jeff's going to be joining me, um, and he's going to be helping me out. Uh, So big shout out to Jeff. So thanks for your support tomorrow. I really appreciate your help. And uh, Jeff's going to be helping me out here more to come. So, uh, you know, try and you know support Jeff as much as you support us. And uh, the 24-hour Daytona is happening January 18th is what it said. January 18th. Yep, January 18th. So um, we'll be uh, promoting that a little, a little bit more. But uh, go check out um, Evolution Sim Sports. Evolution Sim Sports. Um, and they're going to have the Mercedes AG GT3 and a Corvette C7 um, out there racing. So check that out, man. Uh, Evolution Sim Sports, like that. Yeah. Um, they're going to be live on that 24 hour race on their Facebook. So you can watch that there and check them out as well. All right, guys. I think that's going to be a wrap for us today. Uh, go Seahawks. Go Talking to Fair Sports. Go team. Go Dragons. Go, everybody. You guys rule. And uh, go Anchor. Go Twitch. Go Jeff. Go me. Go you.